WP Get Web Dev Tutorials for All User Levels. Okay, guys, so another tutorial inspired by a question in the Global Elementor uh, Community Facebook group uh, by Abraham here in this case. Uh, what he's saying is he wants to create a Lottie effect um, that plays when the user hovers over the container that it's in. Uh, with the Elementor settings here, that's a Lottie there, for example. Um, you can tell it to, uh, da -da -da, where are we? Play or trigger on scroll, hover, click, or when it enters the viewport. Um, but you can't tell it to play when the parent container or column or whatever you're using is uh, hovered or clicked or whatever. So, um, so this tutorial is going to go through a way of being able to do that. All right, so the end result we're going to have is I've got a container here, which I've just got a slight background color and some Lorem Ipsum text, and I've got a Lottie animation in the top left. If I roll my mouse anywhere over this container, the Lottie plays. This is just using the default element to a Lottie. If I roll my mouse outside the container, it goes in reverse. It plays again, and it goes in reverse when I move out. And you might also notice that the reverse is actually playing quicker than the forward. You can control that as well. So with doing this, unfortunately, the uh, standard Elementor uh, widget doesn't have a lot of options for that kind of thing. So what I'm going to do here is just go through this process. So I've got a basic container, an outer container. I've just added some padding to the top and the bottom. Uh, so we can see this easily. I've added another container inside that. I actually go back to my outer container. I've just set my outer container to a, where are we? To a uh, horizontal row, so I can have two containers inside it. This is just for demonstration purposes. So container one is just a container that all I've done is uh, in the style. I've just set a bit of a background color. You can set that to whatever you like. A uh, bit of a background color. Um, and then in the, uh, I've put a Lottie in there uh, and I've set the settings to trigger on none. Um, and what else have I done? Um, oh, so under the advanced, set it to a custom width and just made it uh, yeah, smaller than that width of that um, container. And then I've just added a text editor widget. Um, and on the right hand side, I've got another container, which has just got an HTML widget in there, uh, where I've put all of my code to make this work. So this can be anywhere on the page because we're listening for event listeners. This code could be anywhere on the page uh, and you can put it there once for multiple of these. So if I had four different containers with a lot in it that I wanted to animate when you hover over the container, um, I only need one of these code blocks and it'll do all of those. All right, so the Lottie itself, uh, again, I've just set it to a custom width uh, and uh, I've told it to, um, in the settings, to not do any animation. Now, this doesn't actually do what you think it'll do. When you set it to none, when Elemental first adds it to the page, it does the animation. So we're going to stop that from happening, um, but it won't trigger the animation on any other events. So, but it does do an initial animation once it's once it's added to the page, which I don't want in this case. In my Lottie, all I'm doing on my Lottie, I've got a class on there I've put here, which is called Trigger on Parent Hover, and I'm going to use that to select the Lotties that I want that to apply to. So that class there, trigger on parent hover, is all I need to add to this Lottie to make this work. So heading over to the code, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about this because this is where it gets really confusing when you're interacting at a JavaScript level with Elementor. In their documentation, um, the JavaScript hooks here, uh, it refers to functions here where you're calling, you're looking at the front end, Elementor front end, hooks, add filter, um, that does not exist yet. Um, so what we then do is down here, there's a another listener here uh, for an anchor link. Again, this does not actually exist at this time. So when you try and do this, you just get an undefined error on the hooks. 
Um, so it doesn't work the way that it's uh, it's shown in these um, examples in the documentation. So further down here, you've got this Elementor front end in it hook. I'm looking at the JavaScript hooks here. The example they give you is looking at Elementor front end hooks, add action, Elementor front end in it. Now, if you add that even at the end of your uh, document, hooks add action is not defined yet. So this documentation is wrong at this point, which is where it threw me for some time. So I always use a standard closure. So the brackets at the top here, the close brackets at the bottom, and then passing in a property of window. That's what they call a closure. And then I've got a uh, anonymous ES6 function here. So window passes in and just becomes the W uh, property. Uh, this is for keeping my scope clean, so I don't have to worry about clashes with naming for any other um, function blocks or code blocks. Uh, it gives me an isolated scope in here. So what I discovered is that on the window object, if you add event listener for element or front end in it, that works. Once that is called, then element or front end hooks at action exists. Back here, this does not exist yet until this uh, window element or front end in it has run. So they need to update this documentation to highlight that because that was really confusing. It really threw me for a six when I'm trying to figure this out uh, initially, but this definitely works. So, uh, so what we're now doing is we're adding the element or, to, sorry, to the element or front end hooks we're adding the action for front end element ready lottie.default. So we head over to their documentation. So there's a front end elemental element ready widget which fires on every single widget that's initialized in JavaScript. Um, if you just want it to target a particular widget, um, you can do front end element already, the element skin type, and skin name. So if we look at this Lottie, we look at the element. So our widget type is here, which is Lottie.default. That's our element uh, name and skin name. So if we head back over here, if we're listening for when any Lottie.default widget uh, is initialized, um, it's going to call uh, this uh, S6 function in here. The scope that it passes in is a jQuery object for that widget. So what we're doing is we're looking at the scope and we're looking to see whether it has a class of trigger on parent hover. So over on this widget here, remember in the advanced settings, we added trigger on parent hover. And if we look at the classes on that widget, uh, where are we there? Uh, I've got trigger on parent hover uh, class on that widget. So back over in our code, what we're doing is we're saying, if this particular jQuery object has the class of trigger on parent hover, then I'm gonna initialize my listener for it, okay? Now, I am setting a timeout here. Now, what I did realize with when this is ready, the JavaScript to animate or create the um, Lottie animation hasn't finished initializing yet. So I just tried a few different values at 50, p, uh, 50 milliseconds. It was sometime initialized and sometimes it wasn't. Uh, 200 it was always initialized so I thought I'd just make that 300 milliseconds so I know that it's very likely that it's already initialized okay because I want to make sure that the JavaScript is already run to initialize this Lottie animation before I do my bits then I'm going to get a reference to the Lottie JavaScript uh, reference to this Lottie now if we go back over again have a look at our DOM so there's the widget if we go down the DOM, we get to this class here, which is the e lotty underscore animation. What I found just through playing with this is that uh, Elementor is adding a jQuery data object with a reference to the actual Lottie 
um, reference uh, for this. So what we can do is actually um, from our scope, which is the jQuery reference to this entire widget, find the eLottie animation and get the data Lottie. Now that is a JavaScript reference, which we use down here. Now what I want to do is get the parent of this container. So I'm using uh, jQuery's uh, parent method here, and that looks for the parent container. So in this case, it is a container. It could be a widget container, it could be a column, could be whatever you want it to be. It doesn't matter, it's just getting the parent. Now, if you wanted to expand this so that you're looking for, um, uh, it, might, it might be a uh, container up here that's got multiple um, objects in here with multiple lotties and wherever you roll over anywhere in that, you might put a class on the top level here and you might look for the closest uh, closest um, yeah, trigger container. So now if I have put the class of trigger container on this top container here, um, my parent here is going to become that top level container. So if I roll my mouse anywhere over that, it's going to uh, trigger the Lottie animation for that. Now, I'm happy enough in this case just to go with the parent uh, for this demonstration. So we just want to find the container that that's in. Um, now, because Elemental automatically starts playing the Lottie as soon as it adds it to the uh, display, what I want to do is stop the uh, animation. So I'm going to do a Lottie uh, stop. So Lottie is my JavaScript reference to the Lottie animation here. Lottie set direction to one, and then Lottie stop. Um, now, the other thing I did here was of on the window object of, of set a property of Lottie to equal this Lottie. The reason I did that is I had no idea what Lottie library these guys are using. So what this does is if you head over to your console and you type window dot Lottie, Okay, so that window.lottie there is being added by this here, window.lottie or w.lottie equals lottie. So if I use that and I do a dot in Chrome, it's brilliant. Chrome, if I'm looking for setters, I just type, type the word set and I get set data, set direction, set segment, set speed. So this tells me some of the things that I can do in there. I've got pause, I've got uh, play, I've got stop. So I've got play. Uh, I saw that set uh, direction up here. Um, now I tried looking for reverse. There's no reverse, so I assume that the set direction is the uh, is the correct um, uh, method to use for that. So the set direction. Um, so I used this to figure out what methods that I have, and then just played with that to get my end result. So. So what I'm doing here is set the direction to one, stop it. Uh, now this is a jQuery method. So hover, jQuery hover is like doing a mouse over and a mouse out, uh, or a mouse enter and a mouse leave, I should say. Um, but the way this method works is you've got property one, which is what do you run when you mouse over? Property two, what do you want to run when it mouses out? So all I'm doing is when you mouse over, uh, logging out a, or infoing out to the console play lottie. You'd comment this out on live code, setting the direction to one, speed to one, and telling it to play. On the mouse out, just uh, info reverse lottie, set the direction to minus one. I set the speed to two, so it's twice the speed, and then set play. So if we look here, by mouse over, it plays. Watch when I mouse out, it's twice the animation speed. Twice the animation speed. So look at this animation here. Mouse out, and it's twice the animation speed. So whether you want to do that or not is up to you, but that's how you do it. So that is pretty much it. Now I'm going to uh, copy all this code, stick it into a code block in my tutorial so you can just copy and paste this. If you want to just do this simply without understanding all this, all you have to do is get an HTML widget or use uh, Elemental custom code, or whatever you use to add JavaScript to a site. Uh, if you want to add the site wide, you can do that. You can use code snippets, whatever. 
Uh, I'm only going to use it on this page, so I'm just going to stick it in an HTML widget. Um, so put that on the page, paste this code into it, put a lotty inside a column, a container, whatever you want, and then add the class uh, trigger on parent hover, and this will work for you. So that's pretty much it. I'm just going to update here, make sure I haven't broken anything. Go, mouse over, mouse out, mouse over, mouse out. There you go. Hopefully that is something that is useful and uh, and enjoy.